Uh, let's uh, let's get into the segment. I wanted to do this. Uh, I think uh, Colin's been working on saving some pictures. I'm not sure if they're all saved yet or not. I don't want to rush them along too much. But, uh, John, your goal was to go to Alaska and see the Northern Lights. You'd seen them before from Iceland in a bit of more of a muted form in the past? Right. We, had, we took this. Um, we were in Iceland actually on a book thing. And took this tour way out into the tundra on a on a four wheel drive thing, and and very cold. We saw the Northern Lights, but they were very dim. And we had heard that uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, is is Fairbanks, Alaska, and then an unpronounceable town in Finland are the two best places to see the the Northern Lights. So we went out there, and when we arrived at the airport um, on Monday morning i guess it was it was after midnight when we arrived it was minus 30 when you when you're flying in not wind chill no not wind chill when you're when you're flying in and the pilot says welcome to fairbanks the local temperature is minus 32 degrees fahrenheit he's like holy crap <laughs> is that the opposite of the miami effect you know you get off the plane in miami and it's like putting your head in an oven yeah right to- right right and uh, if you if you remember a few days before I left, it was the twenty seventh is uh, my birthday is when the um, the trip started, and just four days before that, it was eighty degrees here. Right. So that was a hundred and ten <laughs> degree swing over the course of four days. That's insane. It, it is insane. We have some pictures. While you're talking, Colin's going to put some pictures up, and maybe you can uh, describe what they are and where you were when you were taking these. Too. That is actually at the resort where we stayed. We spent a couple of days in Fairbanks, and we went to the China Hot Springs Resort, which is about 30 miles outside of Fairbanks, in the middle of nowhere. It's actually 20 miles past the area of road maintenance, state maintenance on the road. So it's, you're, we were in a car, it was a shuttle that took us out there. And that is just outside the hotel room. Mm-hmm. Um, the Northern Lights showed up and they just did this fabulous display. Did they give you the scientific explanation as to what caused it? You know, I did. I went to a movie, I, to you know, a half hour show that explains it. It has to do with solar winds and and atomic stuff <laughs> and you know i thought as i was listening to I appreciate it appreciate the scientific yeah, exactly i thought oh well this makes a lot of sense and then 20 minutes later i couldn't possibly totally explain forgot. what was happening <laughs> but it's a re- i mean the, the, it's a and you can just keep sliding them colin by the way that, that's fine it looks like a picture from uh, the old scooby-doo cartoons it's like a, a ghost know, where they would show the ghosts <laughs> old man weatherby or something. it looks a little like oh. slimer actually if you slimer uh, yeah from yeah. ghostbusters but they just appear uh, sometime after 10 o'clock is when this was. Nighttime? And, 10 o'clock and, night? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And um, we were hanging around the, it was our last night actually. Um, and I decided, well, let's, I'm going to go out and check one more time and see if they're out there. And so I, I put on, yes, I admit that I was wearing these because there's the hot springs there. I, you know, these Crocs, the, the slip on yeah. type ugly shoes. So barefoot, I slipped into those, and my intent was just to go out, look in the sky, and see that there's nothing there, and then come back in, and then I got this show. So I was out there for about 20 minutes, essentially barefoot, and I will tell you, at minus 25 degrees, it's... Um, Bad idea. The, the toes get yeah, nippy. Not, not a great idea. No, no, no. we've got a... Uh, Colin's got a dog sled picture uh, queued up here, so tell me, uh, and that's going to roll through on the TV here. We're about a 20-second delay in studio, so you can see like on the live TV shot. This is right. one of my favorite. We we went on a... It's 10 dogs in, in that uh, line. Uh, this is outside of... It's beyond China Hot Springs. Uh, yeah, it, was, it was in the minus teens when we were doing this. Uh, we got to harness those dogs. We put them into their... their um, you do it yourself? Into, well, with, with guidance, yeah. of course. But um, the dogs are very friendly. Those are Alaskan Huskies, not Siberian Huskies. So they're more the size and condition. So they, they more speak English. Exactly. Got it. Exactly. So mush doesn't work. You, you have to say, go. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, much, much doesn't work. <laughs> And, is, that, uh, is that a fact or you're being funny? <laughs> no, uh, they don't say much. Actually, say there's much? two words. It's like ghee and something else left and right. That um, Now, the driver of, we were, um, Joy and I, my wife and I were actually in the cargo bed of this. And then there's a driver behind us. So like in the, in the old Eric Von Zeppa movies, you'd have been the sidecar of the motorcycle. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And there are pictures coming up. There it's, you go. Um, I'm in the back. That's my wife. In so the she's front. bearing so. the brunt of the wind chill factor, and you are <laughs> drafting <laughs> off of her. Yeah, honey, you stay in front for a better view of the wind. <laughs> That's a man right there, buddy. Uh, I'll, I'll chuck my face right in behind you. <laughs> women, and, women and children first. Joy's got icicles hanging from her face. John's like, I'm kind of warm back here. <laughs> but 
it's better than that. It's better than that because these, these dogs actually relieve themselves. They poo oh, nice. as they're running. Of course. So, so having the lead position is, is special in that way. <laughs> There's no, you have no, wind, no windshield. Or... So there's there's really nothing positive for her by being in front of you. And of course, she didn't know this at the time. She thought John was giving her the better view. <laughs> yeah, honey, well, you, you take the window seat. <laughs> well, okay, there, there is an advantage because her legs are completely tucked into that. And you can't see it here, but my left leg had actually popped out. Mm -hmm. And um, that foot got very cold. I'll have you know. <laughs> I suffered. I'm sure, I'm sure it's tough on you, John. While your wife was being pelted by dog poo chunks, frozen, of course, and frozen dog urine. You did withstand your hardship, though, so you shared in the misery. <laughs> I do my part. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, very nice. Uh, <laughs> I don't, it's hard to get past that. It isn't really it? is. It's kind of it's funny to move on, though. So, but uh, is that like a cab, basically, in Alaska? Uh, no, that is stri strictly a, a, a recreational thing. Although our driver, I don't know if I finished the sentence or not. Our driver was actually going to participate. Or had participated in the Iditarod. Oh, cool! Nice. And um, that, that's a thousand miles of that. Yeah. And uh, so I talked to her about this, and and when it's time to stop, the dogs, you know, dogs do the little doggy donut thing mm -hmm. when they to, to keep warm, and that's and the driver just joins the donut. Oh yeah. For for the night, and they sleep for a few hours, and then they and then they move on. It sounds very punishing. So uh, in the dog sled thing there, where were you guys headed and for how long did it take to get there? About a 45-minute trek through the woods. I presume it's a prescribed trail, uh, but it's, it's just gorgeous. Uh, perfect day. And it's very cold. I, I mean, cold think. is cold. So how long can you stay outside in minus 30-degree weather before you eventually lose things? As long as you're covered up, I guess, um, indefinitely. Cheeks and nose get a little... Get a little cold, yeah. Um, but um, but you didn't have you didn't have the wind though because she was she was nicely right. blocking was, it, the wind. It helps it helps to have a windbreaker. It, it's <laughs> Joy, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you why. I just need you to gain a little weight before we go on this trip. <laughs> can you uh, can we work on your posture? Can you sit up just a little straighter? Actually, I did. I did more carbs, it. Joy. More carbs. When when she sat down in front of me, she had the, you know this big hood on, and I did ask her to take the hood down so I could see better. Oh, oh, you got to have your view. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, in, in regards to that uh, that trip there, uh, so you set that up through the lodge where you stay. That you're not like calling an Uber. That's a dog sled or anything, right? Well, now, ground transportation in Alaska is, is a real issue. I mean, even at the airport, it's the only airport, I've traveled a lot, it's the only airport I've ever been where there's not a line of cabs. And here it is after midnight, and with the only flight that has arrived, last flight, I presume, at uh, Fairbanks International, and there are no cabs. So I called a lift. Good luck with that, right? I actually got a lift, and then he just said no. <laughs> so we were, we were stuck at the airport, and then finally I saw a cab show up, went out to meet it, and no, somebody had called that cab. Oh. So then, okay, what do you need to do? What do you need to know to call a cab? The number. Sure. So the good news is they had that. And ultimately, it took us about 45 minutes to, to get a ride to the hotel. And then I realized you have to arrange ahead of time to get rides everywhere. So we probably, it's and everything, nothing's cheap. Alaska is very expensive. It's like New York, uh, New York expensive. Yeah, because you can't, you know, it's not like you can grow your own vegetables there. Right. right? Although they do. The, at Chena Hot Springs, where we're staying, they have these big greenhouses where they grow all their own vegetables it's a lot like new york except colder and much less crime much less crime much less because crime. because the victims will all shoot back there you know it's it's a it's that kind of a culture do you see some bears nothing wrong with that uh, i saw dead bears like strung up on walls and stuff but <clears> it is bear country but they're they're hibernating now they know better than to be out in minus 20 degree weather smart I saw a moose oh yeah they're, they're oh, they cool. can be an issue yeah just crossing the road how big Oh God! There's fifteen, sixteen hundred pounds. Wow! They're really big. That's they're majestic animals. It's a lot of moose. Back to some more Northern Lights photos. You know, it's just, they show up. They just kind of materialize. The Northern Lights. They come as it almost looks like a cloud, mm -hmm. and then it starts to take on color. Uh, it's never to the eye. It's never as vivid as what it comes through on on the through a camera. I don't understand why. It probably has to do really? with that atomic stuff. But uh, it looks like that, just less vivid. 
So what was the difference between what you saw from Alaska versus what you saw from Iceland? Just a lot more of it. We saw in Iceland, we saw the northern lights kind of peeking up behind ridges and, and such. Uh, didn't fill the sky, anything like this. This was on your yeah. list of things you had to accomplish. It is. Uh, it's, it's, I recommend that everybody do it. It's, traffic stops. I'm told we were obviously in a parking lot here. But everybody, I don't know, dozens of people had flooded out to go look up and, and take pictures. Apparently, this is the best week, as it just turned out. Uh, folks said that they've lived there for you know, 25, 30 years, and this is the best week they've seen for the Northern Lights. So we kind of lucked out. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and this week, actually, or next week, it, it will be in the mid-40s. So are they always green? Uh, they're normally green. They will also get some reds, I'm told, or purples. I didn't see that. So will you incorporate Alaska and the Northern Lights into the next uh, next book? Um, well, it depends on what the tax write-off would be for the research, you know. it's No, I can't see the... Uh, I don't think Jonathan Gray or anybody's going to Alaska. It's maybe. You never know. You never know. You never know. So well, ever, you have ever to, is to, a long time. You have to buy the book and read to find out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so here... <laughs> Doreen... We've reached new heights in information on Rob's show with the defecation habits of Alaskan Huskies. <laughs> See, and, and that's the Thank thing. you, Doreen. You, you never know what you're going to learn on this, on this show. And, and that's the wonderful thing about it. Prior to now, you would have thought, while dog sledding, you might have had some type of protection against the Huskies and what they're doing while they're working. But now you know you don't. No well, windshields. And none of that gets into the marketing literature. No. You know? <laughs> Don't sit in front. <laughs> Don't be in the first It's not some kind of a weird fetish that people travel there for. But pay big money. But now you know, because of this show, if you yourself go dog sledding, you know, let the other spouse take the first seat. <laughs> so because, they can have a better view. Because they can exactly. have a better view. Exactly. You wouldn't have known that had you not done this. But that was, Bodwell's question was what I thought too, is, is, is this a way to write off a trip by, by working it into a book it would be if if that's what i were doing yeah but that's not what i was doing but you could potentially do i it. could potentially right except except the book now is taking place in in central america with the cartels and it's hard to tie the northern lights in alaska into that but this, maybe the maybe book. the people in the cartel maybe they need to meet with the russians and they decide to go you know meet in alaska across the, across the land bridge right so yeah they have to go yeah, yeah exactly okay, yeah that's absolutely. all happened anywhere so uh, how much did you pay attention to what was going on back here while you were up there? Vaguely. You know, I, I was aware of the, the tax cuts and the, uh, but that's kind of it. Mm -hmm. um, we were in an area, what was the last time you were in an area that had no internet and had no cell phone service? Oh, it's been a while. Uh, oh, for me, it's it happens a lot. I go into the middle of West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, that's probably a loaded yeah. question here. We right? have some, there's some spots. All right. But it was we spent days kind yeah. of out of touch. Sure. I was, I was talking more hours. You know, uh -huh. I, I can't go more than an hour or two without some kind of a connection. It's oddly refreshing. We had a television in our room, but of course it didn't work. So because there was no Internet. Yeah. So um, you're not stringing cable TV to right. an outpost right. in Alaska. So it was kind of refreshing. Just, well, that's that's so cool. if they know what's going on out there. And you're in a staying in a place, and they know there's no TV. Why do they have TV? Yeah, why do they have TV? Why? <laughs> because I presumably just to, to it, torment you. It's in the <laughs> oh, honey, turn the TV on. It's in the marketing literature. <laughs> <laughs> they put a little thing. You could be watching this. I presume that the internet was out then, and and that's why we didn't get television. So is uh, is Sarah Palin still a thing in Alaska? I uh, well, she's still in Alaska, and she's still well thought of. Mm -hmm. At least among the, the folks we were hanging out with. I ended up spending time with um, uh, Nick Stepovich. Mike Stepovich was the first governor of Alaska. So Nick is his son. And he's of a certain age now. And I'd say that probably my age. Uh, one of 16 children, I think. Yeah. And governor was active. I guess he didn't have cable either. Light, nights are long. <laughs> <laughs> nights are long and dark. Um, so we actually visited... One of his, he's got a, a hotel bar, Soapy Smith's is the name of it, uh, in Fairbanks with a lot of, of political memorabilia and such. It was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the guy who, Alaska in 1959, or in the run-up to statehood, uh, Alaska was not well thought of. It, it wasn't 
was thought of like Eskimos and, and, and such. Sure. So he was the normal face of normal Alaskans. Lots of, of quotation marks here, finger quotes. And, um, and he just helped bring normalcy or a normal imp, uh, impression of Alaska to the lower 48. Uh, were you anywhere near the Army base that's up there? I don't remember what it's called. Glenn Mocker, when he was in the service, told me about being stationed up there for There's a while. an Air Force base and an Army base in Fairbanks, Yeah, which is a large part of the economy. I remember him telling me that they used to tell the, the servicemen, when you leave the base, don't go out past this perimeter by yourself because you could be eaten by a bear. When they're not hibernating, I guess. Well, grizzlies are a big deal. Yeah. They're a big, they're a big beast. Actually, somebody... One of our drivers, I think, was telling me that they're not in Fairbanks, but near Fairbanks. Uh, a mother and daughter were eaten by a polar bear. Mm -hmm. Wow. And they apparently don't hibernate all that much. They, they look so cuddly this, and nice in those climate change commercials they I sure see do. on TV. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, as far as the grizzly bears go, you don't have to be faster than the bear, just faster <laughs> than the person you're with. Which is why he brought joy with him, by the way. <laughs> you go first, honey. So uh, in regards to climate change, is there much melting of, uh, of, of the permafrost that you saw when you were in Alaska? It was minus 30. So, no. If, if anything, it seemed to be thickening up. Is it, is it something that's on the minds of the people who live there? Are they experiencing anything? Are they getting 75 degree days in January? Uh, no, I didn't hear anybody talk about it. I didn't see any evidence of, but the, there is snow on the ground that has been on the ground since November. You know, they don't ever really clear the roads. Mm -hmm. There's not an intact windshield in all of Alaska because they don't use salt. They use gravel. So, ah. uh, oh. and everybody gets, a, you're an insurance guy. Everybody gets a free windshield in April. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. Do they really? Yeah. Open up, open up a uh, a window franchise, a car window franchise in, in Alaska. Make a fortune. There you go. Did you learn anything about the oil dividend? Um, yes, everybody gets one, mm -hmm. and it it varies from year to year. I don't know what it is. It seemed like I'd be prying to ask for a real number, but it's sure. several thousand dollars. I mean, it's it's real money. And in regards to how much daylight you had during the day, it was kind of what we have here in uh, in July. It's the land of the midnight sun. Right, it's it's 24 hours of daylight, and about the uh, the uh, winter equinox, the mid December, it's only three hours of sunlight, and it's kind of the, it's described like dusk or dawn, I guess. Um, the rest of the time, it's dark. The most cold. interesting thing you saw or discussed while you were in Alaska, besides the northern lights and not having TV, the adaptation of the locals to the cold. You know, we're we were dressed up with all this puffy kind of, you know, gear. They're wearing denim jackets mm -hmm. out in, in the cold weather. Of course, they're also not spending a lot of time in the cold weather. Because they're smart. Right. They're going from here to there. But it's just, it's a whole different uh, lifestyle. Nothing is, everything is weather beaten. It's kind of like when you go to the Outer Banks, it's a different way. But, you know, you go to the Outer Banks, all of the structures are just beaten up right because of the of the wind and the sand and all kind of the same in fairbanks everything is just weather beaten and how could it be otherwise sure right great trip recommend anybody go it's really a good time johnny no i think uh that's a place i've always wanted to go i want to take one of those cruises through alaska where you you, know, you get out and you see everything i don't want to come close to a grizzly bear or anything like that uh but I think that Alaska is one of the greatest places in the world. I think everybody needs to see it. And it's on my bucket list. And now it's even more so after hearing your stories. And the seafood. The seafood is spectacular. Oh. The halibut and the salmon are, are oh. just spectacular. How close are you to the water where you were? Well, Fairbanks is probably 300 miles from the, from the water. But. So not close at all? Uh, no. Yeah. Do they seem, I mean, are they, the, the normal people that you see, are they, do they seem impoverished? I mean, do they seem yeah. sort of downtrodden? Well, I was at a resort. So, uh, but a lot of locals come to the resort, apparently. Driving, we were checking in, uh, uh, waiting for a table at the hotel restaurant, and the wait was, you know, 40 minutes or whatever. And understand, we're 35, 40 miles from, from Fairbanks, and it's snowy and awful outside, and there's a couple in front of us didn't want to wait that long, so where is the nearest place to get a drink? And they said, well, down in Fairbanks. I said, okay. So I just left, and they drove to Fairbanks, the snowy roads to get a drink and then presumably drive back which you know it's 
not exactly advisable, but you know, it's just people adapt. Yeah, you, you drive the half hour, forty five minutes to Fairbanks. You have a few pops. You drive back. That's um, yeah. What's what that can go really wrong? doesn't sound like a great idea. It doesn't. It doesn't. Well, good stuff, man. Appreciate the pictures. I initially texted you when you had left and said, hey, what do you think about doing like a report from uh, from Alaska? And you know, the time difference there kind of precludes that from happening. And the lack of cell service would have been a problem, too. That also makes it difficult to make a call. Yeah. But uh, the pictures uh, idea was pretty cool as Colin rotates those back up. Uh, through, um, I think we've gotten all the pictures up that you had sent. And those are beautiful. Those are really and nice. if you go to my Facebook page, John Gilstrap, author, there's a bunch more if you're interested in seeing such things. Right, very nice. Any other nuggets to get across to anybody regarding your trip? Uh, the hardest part of any of this is the 20-hour travel days. There's no easy way to get from here to Fairbanks. And How, I, What was your route? Where did you stop? Well, we started in Pittsburgh, and then the flights went Pittsburgh to Detroit to Seattle to Fairbanks. Coming back, it was Seattle, uh, Minneapolis, and then in Pittsburgh. It's just a long, long day. That is a long day. Yeah, and going there, you're going back in time and coming this way, you're losing Yeah, time. it's a four-hour difference, which is, it doesn't sound like a lot until you're trying to adjust your sleep schedules, yeah. but absolutely worth it. How many people did you go with? It was my uh, cousins, Barbie and Bob, and my wife, so it was four of us total. Speaking of Barbie and Bob, uh, the anniversary of the Barbie doll is today, 1959. Wow. Just throw, throw that I, in there. I have to ask the obvious question. Did, did Bob stick Barbie in the front of the sled? I don't know. They went on a different sled. So I'm going to guess yes, because that's, that, that's, what, that's how they place you.